call it Papa Arnold real quick. Yeet! Can you hear me? I can. Good, good. Hold on, I'm on my hollow pad right now. How the heck do I put the speaker? You want speaker? Yeah. I'm... <laughs> there we go. Yeah, there we go. Am I on your iPad while you take a pooper? No, nah, I'm just walking around the Star Destroyer. I see. The biggest and deadliest Star Destroyer, of course. <laughs> Obviously. Watching the sunset on an Alderaan right now. It's actually a sunrise, but who's counting? Say, this might be the last sunset <laughs> on an Alderaan. Who knows? How you, how you, how you feeling, man? Oh, man, I'm feeling good. I saw uh I saw your video in two times speed. Your your frustration in sped up mode is quite uh, amusing. Dude, you know how it is, man. They always an excuse at this company. You know, uh where where are the where are the gear two point oh changes and all of a sudden they start talking like a tusk. <laughs> yeah, and then but somehow they can release Omicrons, Relic Nine, Data Crons. Uh, Ooh, it's like, you did you miss the Relic Ten announcement, sir? I saw the little bit of Relic 10 in there. It's actually, I was like, I was reading it. I was like, oh gosh. And maybe even a Relic 10, which I, you know, I suspect that's going to happen. I mean, that I, I always expect was going to happen at some point. It, it, it's weird to say it, but at least a Relic 10, when you quote unquote invest in it, at least it stays there, right? It doesn't go away <laughs> three months later. It's sad that you got to think of it like that now. I made a joke with chat. I was like, I can't afford to spend money on the game because I have to put a roof over my head. And someone was like, roofs are temporary. Data crons are forever. Oh, wait. Yeah. <laughs> it's the other way around. Oh, man. I don't know who thought this was what the game needed right now. It's like, you know, it's just, I think it's unfortunate. to You know, I, I, I heard part of your stream a second ago that uh, maybe they'll, you know, maybe the upside is they might release something good alongside this to try to ease the blow but it's like i hate that they they have these scapegoats when they do something really crappy they do something so bare minimum like I, like don't get me wrong the gear changes that happened in whatever november mm -hmm. october whatever it happened it's it's good but it's like i feel like that was such a minimal thing to do and that should have been done back in 2018 like really all that did is made carbontes and stun guns easier and that was more of a grind prior to like 2020 so like i feel like even that yeah, it's, it's a good thing but it should have been done back in 2019 2018 and and that was what, what they, they released that to soften the blow for something else they were releasing i can't remember what it was, was. It the gac was like, update or something like that i can't remember what it was. <laughs> could have been the gac changes but it's uh and i so i suspect they might Oh gosh, I'm dying over here. Gary poisoned me. <laughs> that was CG's uh, two pronged approach: drop the yeah. Necrons and kill Arnold. So he yeah, right. Probably no dissenting opinion if you assassinate <laughs> your biggest. Yeah, player. right. Some oh yes, yeah, so that, that's it's just uh, it, it 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 just kills you, man. That the the game's at a point where they do something so bare minimal in terms of improving outdated gear farming and even game modes it's like they just do so bare minimal and then there's always an excuse why they can't do a raid why they can't do a territory battles uh why the gear changes are taking so long to roll out it's like can't they just release like a good update for gear change and don't have to do this datacron thing like what would it take it's always, always got to hold the good stuff hostage what would it take to make this good for you like what would they have to don't do don't don't uh either one don't delete it after three months or two Treat it like data disks in Conquest, where no one cares that data disks are gone the next time around because you didn't spend anything to get them. You got them for free. I think if anything, uh, do it maybe like that, where you either one they could get they a hundred percent refund you, not just a small percentage of what you did, or just give them out for free and um, you know the, the, treat it like just Conquest data disks, where I have no problem that they take it away. I didn't pay for it. You know they always want to mix it up. So I think that's that's the biggest problem, and the fact that they require new materials that most likely they'll sell, and then you need relics to upgrade these as well, and then they're only going to give you some small portion back. It just it sounds like you're leasing the game now, you know. <laughs> where you, you that's, that's what I, that's the analogy I made. It's like you know when you lease a car, you yeah. pay the dealership, you maintain the vehicle, you got to pay for insurance, and at the end of the day, you you don't have anything, and at and at the end of the term, they take the car back, and you're, you know you're left with your dick in your hands. Basically, yes. I think that's the... Yeah, someone in chat was saying that... So, I've played... Mar uh, not Marvel Strike Force. I've played Magic the Gathering twice in my life. Both of those times were on charity streams with Capital Games employees, right? 
I know for yeah. a fact that they all love Magic the Gathering. Someone right. in chat said that this is exactly like something in Magic called Standard, which is like the pay-to-play version of Magic where like every so often they drop a, a deck and you have to buy mm -hmm. it. And then like a couple months later, the old deck is banned and you can't play unless you buy the new thing. So it's literally paid. It's not pay to win. It's paid to actually play. And they're saying this is like a carbon copy of that system, which makes sense because no they all play Magic, right? So right, yeah. I, oh, just... I, yeah, yeah. When I used to meet them a couple of years ago, uh, they would always nerd out on Magic. I know they played a game that I played. It's called Star Wars Destiny, which is like Magic the Gathering but Star Wars version. It, the game got canceled, but mm -hmm. uh, they're big. They're big card nerds. So yeah, I didn't know about it. That that kind of uh kind of makes sense i guess if they're trying to get inspiration from something out there at yeah, least on the cards you physically have them still <laughs> yeah i guess i want to hit you with this though i want to get your opinion on this i'm going to show the stream one of the screenshots it's just the it's just the bar graph explaining yeah, like, the, the, the month breakdown it's it's not too too involved but let's say it's... that this is how it rolls out right mm -hmm. let's say that you free to play naturally occur enough resources somehow to get three datacrons every set, right? Let's say they drop mm -hmm. 10, 10 datacrons per set. You free-to-play get enough to get three. You don't have to spend anything. People can spend money to get five or seven or whatever, right? But you naturally get three. And then the next set, you have six because you got three more. The next set, mm -hmm. you have nine, so now you have three more. So you're usually sitting at about nine, right, once it's up and running. Mm -hmm. And then when the old one dies, you're back down to six, but you get nine because the next one starts but it refunds 50%. So now you still have enough for nine free to play, but it's refunded 50%. So now you have enough for 10, right? So at least every time it's kind of building, you know, it's not like you've lost everything. You're building because they're giving you the, the, the resources free to play. Of course, the people who spend money are going to have better roles, way more data crons to choose from, but at least it's free to play. You have enough. Theoretically, if you pick the right ones, you can be fine. So there's still that, that, pay to win but the free-to-play players at least aren't actively deteriorating the worth of their roster right it's kind of a net neutral maybe a net positive if it rolls out like that is this not the end of the world because it's not depreciating your account you're kind of just staying the same while everyone else takes off or like how do you think it's this hard is to gonna, say i don't know the work? scope of the power i mean i i, I, I mean kind of <laughs> have you but seen the fucking screenshots dude well it's uh, like it well yeah i just it's i can imagine it health steel ray well, you, every time you didn't someone play died. the game in 2016 in 2016 dude mods first cut they were absolutely broken like this is before even gear 12 was a thing and characters are already in like the hundreds of thousands of health and protection and crazy amounts of speed Mm -hmm. So it kind of sounds like that. Here's the problem. I don't know what that gap is going to be. Like, yes, you can do this free to play. And honestly, I find it really, I don't know. Like how do they, how do they, how do they want to sell this to Wales? Like, how is this like, I don't know what the, what the pitch is here, but the point being is I don't know how far behind you might be like mod mods are already a problem where, you know, mm -hmm. people, have bigger mod inventories, they usually have a mathematical advantage, but like how, what's that difference between a free to play data cron and then a pay-to-play data cron, like uh, it just it looks like there's just absurd amounts of stats because it's kind of compounded, right? Because mm -hmm. usually whales are going to have the relic nine, so they're going to be able to achieve more bonuses throughout the uh, data cron. Whereas, you know, relic nine is not as common for a lot of other players. So, yeah, I don't know. I think um, I just wish they didn't monetize it. Like if they just did it free to play, I think it'd be a more of a normal playing field. But yeah, yeah right now it just seems like that gap between. A free to play data cron and a pay to play data cron. And I think it's, you know, I think it's just going to keep separating the crowd. You know, it's, uh, mm -hmm. it's just going to just separate the audiences more. You know, you're going to have people move farther away than the, in, in the GAC matchmaking, how it works now. It's just, you know, it's the whales are going to just keep whaling it out in the ocean. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, um, I mean, they're, they're definitely actively monetizing all of Kyber One, right? The ship update was that's, like, that's basically what it sounds like. Yeah. The ship update was the big indicator. Yeah. Kyber, you have to pay to be in Kyber One, because free to play players were in Kyber One before, because they've been kind of existing and punching up mm -hmm. and doing well and whatever. But with the ship update, like they just couldn't compete against the people who had all seven fleets maxed out. Right? There's just no way. So they're actively. Yeah, we saw that too. Yeah, like I said, I'm going to be fine with that update because I, I'm, I'm kind of I got the roster for it, but not a lot of people in Kyber Two, Three, Four, Five can do the same. Yeah, I feel like I'm just. So so wanting this to not suck. 
I mean, here's the thing. There's definitely a way. There's definitely, uh, you know, um, there definitely could be an upside to this depending on how they roll it out. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I like, think it's I, gonna make Galactic Legends much worse. I feel like this is oh gosh, moving away see, from like that. the raid bonuses, for example. Yeah. You know, like it, or the resistance bonuses when a when a resistance yeah. ally takes turn less than two buffs, which they only have damage critical damage immunity usually at the start of their turn. The, the whole team gets fifteen percent turn meter. I mean, this is yeah. Um, this is that our traditional notion of how teams work. It's just going to completely get thrown out the window. Like how to beat a raid team is not going to be the same three months from now. And then three months after that. And it's always going to be this. I mean, so that's one up. So there is an upside that maybe you can see, all right, things are going to get a little bit more fresh. Teams are going to kind of change in viability. Like right now, let's say inquisitors are trash, but they could have a data cron one season. It's, they could be absolutely insanely powerful. So mm -hmm. th that's an upside. Maybe. And the other potential upside is, um, like I said, there's a big, like, one of the biggest problems with new players when they come in, there's almost no way they can catch up on mods. Yeah. Mods is a time thing. You need to be doing it for a long, long time. I can see this maybe helping out smaller rosters, potentially, and that's assuming they can go far up the Datacron upgrades. But maybe, like, there's a, fir like, for example, my free to plays Empire First Order focused. Like, if they do a Datacron for a season that supercharges First Order, you know, that could be maybe beneficial. So mm -hmm. um, there's definitely, I can point out positives from yeah. it, but to when you take the situation uh, as a whole, it's a little more challenging. To a similar light, I was talking a little bit before you joined about most players don't have, like, optimal stuff. Like, they're fans of... Rogue One is the example that I used on stream. It's an extreme example, but there's, like, people who have random stuff that maybe not synergy, maybe they just have whatever, right? Yeah, just this whatever. Gives yeah, them maybe a chance for occasionally some of the stuff that they have is good. So at least theoretically, like maybe. I don't know if that's the best. The yeah, years. it's 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 a it's a it's, yeah. That's definitely one way of looking. I don't know if that's still an optimal strategy of farming yeah. Ugnot and like, oh man, you know, his day might come for one month. <laughs> yeah, you know. But uh, so, the, the point I was trying to make is like people who already have a bunch of random stuff, like maybe if the set of 10 data crons drops and there's one that happens to play to the random thing that they happen to farm, maybe they grab that one. No one else in the world is going to grab it, but maybe they grab it because, you know, it applies to them. And maybe it helps out those people who are they played in 2016 and they took a three year break and they're back and they have nothing and they're kind of all over the place. And they're just like, eh, well, at least this helps my and my Ewok team or whatever it is that I have. So I don't know. I was, yeah, I, I again, they, they, they can definitely, I mean, the thing I'm happy about this leak is that they have a chance now to turn this around and maybe input feedback. If they, like, here's, I think that people still, it's just, they need to make money, right? That's why they're doing this crap. Yeah. I just think that they should either refund it 100% of everything, but then they don't make money off it, really. Mm -hmm. Unless, I don't know, this is, it's just, um, it's kind of the reason why they don't want to refund gear like people want to reset a character because mm -hmm. then you can just keep resetting the characters when the meta changes so they don't want to do that yeah i just uh, this whole thing of um leasing a mobile game now where you you best resources you only get a portion of it back it's just yeah i mean that part just doesn't settle to me. but they, they could definitely turn the tie they could turn the ship i could see this being point. something good I mean, one of the screenshots was the discussion questions from their server that they posted, and we asked people uh, on my... And now they have 3,000 million percent of the, the pool of people to answer the question for them. Like, yeah. does the effects uh, feel like exciting and unique way to upgrade your roster? Does this depreciate gear and relics? So I guess they're going to have a much swifter and much larger answer to the questions that they were posing to their beta program. <laughs> so I'm really... There you go. You know what's I'm funny? Really they, they, they once said way back when that they wanted the beta program to be like really open, like mm -hmm. just have a ton of people. They like that. That was like several years ago, like 2020, 2019. They said that and they never did that. They they still kept it to a, it looks like 32 members based off those Slack messages. Um, it's weird. I think uh, it's weird that they don't want to open it up more. You know, it, it's going to get leaked one way or another, right? <laughs> yeah. I uh, I feel like something that they struggle with PR wise is they'll announce something big. And I feel like over the course of years, I think even you'll admit this, like the changes that they've made that have been an extreme have been like generally positive. Mods, huge, like great boost to the game itself. People were really pissed. Same with Relics, same with Galactic Legends, same with even Omicrons, right? Like 
initially people are like, well, this is fucking crazy. This is going to break the game. And eventually people are like, eh, well, this kind of makes the meta more fun, blah, blah, blah. So I have a feeling that one day at some point in the future, this will be like relics or mods or whatever. I think you're looking at it wrong. Right? I think the problem is it's we just we ended up accepting it because what other Star Wars game are you going to play right now? Yeah. Battlefront 2 is dead. Lego Star Wars, you only can do so much of that. That's the problem. The, the mm. thing is, there is no other Star Wars game to play. So it's either this, the, they have a monopoly over Star Wars games right now. So it's either, you know, shut up and play or stop uh, talking big smack and actually quit the game. It, that's the problem. It's, I'm, there's plenty the of things that we no do. No one ever quits. <laughs> no that's one ever the thing. Quits. Yeah, Everyone so... who says they quit doesn't actually quit. Which I can't. Yeah, yeah, I can assure you. Let's say Star Wars, what was the Force Arena, was still alive and well. They get a lot of Star Wars characters. They had the friggin' Inquisitors before CG was even thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, imagine if that game was still around, which is it's, it's kind of a hero collector in a way. And I think the graphics look better, but even back then in 2017 compared to what the game looks today, like if there was another Star Wars game that they actually had to kind of keep their eyes peeled for and not screw up too much, I think a lot of this stuff wouldn't pass by. But this is the. The only game that happens to have a Star Wars skin on it, because um, really at the end of the day, it's just a bunch of text in the background running code. Yeah. It's not like, you know, that's that's all it is. It just has a Star Wars skin on it. It's like Marvel Strike Force, Disney Sorcerer, a Raid Shadow Legends. That's with a different skin. That's the only reason why people end up sucking it up and they keep going. So it's not that people, I don't think it's necessary that people in hindsight loved it love things but it's just one of those where you, you, you just kind of accept it because you don't really have another star wars outlet to get your star wars uh kick out yeah that's true i mean but there are some there's once in a while like like even like relics i don't think we needed relics what the hell did that do all it did is just it elevated the power level and then it just everything just comes back to an equilibrium of some sort we could have been perfectly fine at gear 12 and gear 11 or whatever it was it's just you know you just accept it you know so mm -hmm. i don't think i don't think relics was a thing the game needed yeah um because everything scaled up anyways Oh, you got a Relic 7 Grievous. Well, I got a Relic 7 Malik, so who the hell cares? <laughs> you know, it's, it's uh, you know, mods. I get mods maybe can make the argument that was kind of interesting because it, mm, I, again, I'm trying more to think. varied. It made, it made things more varied because there's like, for example, um, oh, I'm trying to think of, like before mods came out, it's pretty much, you know, there, it was definitely a little bit more stale because everyone just, it was just coin tosses all the time, like Stormtrooper Han lead versus Stormtrooper Han lead. Whoever won the coin toss kind of won. So that's like so maybe that was one of those things, but like relics and gear, it's like that's stuff that we don't need. That's just the money pushing thing and all it does is just it moves the equilibrium up. That's all it's doing. It's not doing anything mind blowing. Yeah, Grievous can get five million max health, but Niles can get ten million, so who the hell cares? You know. <laughs> yeah. It's just that's a different change of the equilibrium. So yeah, I think really it's maybe in some situations we end up liking something post uh, but I think a lot of it is just we just kind of accept the, the fact that, you know, they don't care. You know, the game's Star Wars. There's not really a competitor existing right now to kind of flock over to. And I don't think Star Wars Hunters is going to be a good competitor to the Galaxy. Because it might be a good game, but it's, I don't think it's going to be something yeah. CG's worried about. Like, I think Force Arena was probably the one game that could have maybe been a good Galaxy of Heroes replacement if you were fed up with how the uh, Galaxy of Heroes was. Yeah, so I guess final question is, do you think CG is going to change anything based on the general public outcry that this is a bad thing? Mm, uh, just from seeing history repeat itself, uh, nine out of ten times, they don't care. <laughs> the one time they did care was when the original mods rolled out. They they actually rolled it back, and they like completely dialed it back by like 90%. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they've never rolled back relics. They've never rolled back... Other mod upgrades they've done. They've never rolled back Zetas and Omicron so far. Um, and other gear forms of gear progression. So um, my, my, my mind tells me no, but my heart hopes so. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I feel like I'm definitely in like the stages of grief right now, trying to, trying to uh, bargain. That's how, yeah, that's how Gallic, that's how it is with this game. You go through the, the stages of grief. Yeah, well, I guess, I mean, it's 9 o'clock Pacific time, which means they're probably starting work in eight minutes. So I guess we might get a forum post or something from Ooh, them soon. I don't know. I, don't I know think it was really interesting good. that this all happened. Like, it's been a couple hours. Like, they've been asleep. Like, they have uh, From no what I can idea. tell, uh, the, uh, the alleged discussion I've heard is that they were busy last night. They shut down the beta program, allegedly, and stuff like that, so... 
I, I think they're. Uh, oh, you think they're been, aware of this? I, oh, I think they've been aware of it for a while now. Okay, so I guess someone in the beta program has been like openly upset. I thought this was just like some guy who was secretly pissed. He's like, I don't like this. Yeah, it Ugh. looks like. Um, Damn, crumb yeah. leaves, bro. Crumb leaves just to have one baby. You have one child, and the game goes to shit. The beta program goes to shit. This is a. Uh, this is sad, man. Nope. R.I.P. Props to Crump for sticking around for so long. Committee managers for Galaxy Girls don't last that long. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a, I don't know. It's a stressful job, I feel like. I I hope they're paying him six figures, man, because this oh. is not worth the stress. <laughs> uh, that's the poverty line here. Yeah, that's so, poverty uh, in California, so yeah. I'm, hopefully it's uh, sure mid so. six figures. If not, I hope he fucking leaves for his baby, dude. Like, the stress is mean, not getting, there's got to be I, something better out there, right? It's like I, I can't imagine the pay being that good for that position. There's got to be something like every person I've talked to that after they left this, the at least the community manager position, they all say how much life is better outside of CG. So yeah, either paying crumb really well or I, I can't imagine he can't find another job opportunity out there. That the every community manager that's left, they end up working for a different game. So yeah, I don't know. It's, it, um, I just feel bad for him because. It's not his fault these decisions are happening. It's yeah. he just has to he has to deal with it. And I know how it is where the community managers they get chewed out by the um the devs, the the producers and the management. So it's um uh, yeah, I don't envy him. I don't think I've ever envied him once. <laughs> yeah. I did my interview with him a while back and we talked more personal than actual game stuff and uh, we had a pretty good thirty minute heart to heart about the uh the terrible things that people say to him and uh you know he was on the verge of tears and stuff like that so i definitely don't envy yeah I, yeah that's why like i never yeah. yeah it's uh it's... <laughs> so i guess uh the one good thing that we got from this is hopefully crumb is on to bigger and better things i guess you know there's at least one upside right yeah it's um you know it's funny i mean i i met him back in goodness it's been a while when i first met him, i think it was game changer no it was the ea what the hell they call it it's been so long that their stupid ea play thing that's what it is i bet i think i met it was 2017 last time i was like i met him for the... where you guys were all sitting on a couch like all eight of you guys mm, no mm, i don't remember it's the it's the one where i got almost kicked out of my hotel room oh, okay. i think that i'm pretty sure that was when theron was getting rolled out yeah i can't remember but anyways that's, i met him for the first time that's when he was first brought in and and just let's just say all the community managers there's been several community managers that have come and gone since then Mm -hmm. And uh, he's the only one that's kind of like stuck around from what I could tell community-wise. Community yeah. I guess that just means he has the, the, the greatest intestinal fortitude of them all. A real man's man, I guess. Hey, man, I bet that's going to be a... If he ever goes, does look for a new job, if they see he's been there for whatever, <laughs> whatever it's five years, like, holy crap, man. Yeah, that... <laughs> yeah dude. It's going to be he's like the, balls of steel. the PR agent for Guantanamo Bay. It's like, this guy has balls of steel. We need this man. Yeah, right? <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh, all right. Anyways, man, I'm gonna have breakfast with the yep. lady before she off the work. So you have fun. I'm gonna I'm gonna take off too, man. Thank you for your time, bro, Chacho. I'll, I'll, of course. Uh, we gotta make a video later on, maybe yeah, uh, tomorrow or Friday. All right, we'll do it tomorrow or Friday. I'll see you in my dreams. Yes. Peace.